Laura has lipedema tissue. It's, it's very easy to feel nodules in her tissue, but she also has uh, lots of fatty masses in the, in the tissue here. It's also very sensitive. And then on her hips, she has lymphedema and um, her whole hip is just full and even her, her lower abdomen is just full of fluid and the skin has become very firm. Her uh, sweat glands are enlarged. She's got the pew de la orange look to her skin. Um, there are actually uh, blisters in the skin that you can see and so she's at great risk for developing cellulitis. And for this type of lymphedema, really the best treatment is to uh, get her into a care center and get her wrapped to reduce the fibrosis, to reduce the lymphedema. But unbelievably, there are almost no places in the United States, zero, where a person can go and get cared for. Whereas if you and they get ankle edema and there you can even see it on their feet but in this case it's all above the ankle so there is a difference and it's it's obvious why are we not doing something about this there are so many women in in the united states that are affected by lipedema there are actually millions of women affected by lipedema and if we continue this obesity epidemic we're going to see more and more women in this situation with nowhere to go. My labs look perfect. I have my cholesterol is 121. My blood sugar is 96. It's never been higher than 96 or 99. What are we in the middle of the normal range? All of my labs come back perfect. So when my labs come back perfectly, and then the physician is saying to me, I wish my labs looked like this, what am I supposed to say other than you know, my triglycerides look great, so obviously I'm not eating a bunch of junk, or my triglycerides would be reflecting that, wouldn't they? And it's frustrating for me because the assumption usually is that I've just eaten myself to this state, and it's frustrating. And I, I had a doctor when I was 23 that had bronchitis. He said, well, <laughs> you're not breathing deeply enough to keep your lungs clear, and that's why you have bronchitis. You're fat. You're not breathing deeply enough. I mean, I've dealt with the prejudice out there since I was a little kid. That's not what's happening here. Something else is going on. It's very frustrating as a patient to have a doctor immediately go to weight loss surgery. Right now, weight loss surgery. And, and unfortunately, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible when I speak with the physicians and say, I looked into all of this and I've researched it and I've looked at the mortality rates and I've thought about my body and the response that I've had when I've been under general anesthesia, I don't want to go that route. I have put myself on diet after diet. I've done weight loss diets, you know, with supervision from, from medical physicians, medical personnel, and I will lose weight. It doesn't come off my hips and my thighs. Not very much anyway. I get very thin up here. I lose my breasts. I lose a lot of my arms, but I don't lose it down here. I recently lost 113 pounds over a 18 month period. I was really working hard on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I lost literally an inch and a half in my hips. But I went down to where I had almost nothing to wear anymore clothing wise because if it fits up here, there's no way it's going to fit down here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a frustrating thing that the only answer seems to be when it's somebody my size, weight loss surgery. When in fact, I personally, for me, think that would be dangerous. And so how do I, as a patient, convey that to a doctor without a doctor getting upset? Because I've had them yell at me and tell me, you're gonna die if you don't have weight loss surgery. And he literally raised his voice and yelled at me. And I stood there and said, uh, I'm sorry you feel that way. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I walked out and then went home and cried for two months because it really was very upsetting. I worked right up until two years ago, full time. I have a, currently have a 12 year old daughter I was a teacher in elementary school and then in junior high. I've been very active in my personal life. Uh, as active as, physically active as I possibly could be, doing water aerobics. But as I've watched my body change, it's been frustrating. I mean, I, I've always thought, well, oh, I have nice 
arms, you know, they're nice and thin and my arms are very thin, like the legs are that. Well, they're not so thin anymore because that's, you know, the swelling's there and I've gained and it's just, it's different. And, and it's been frustrating to say, I, I want to help. You know, I go to a doctor and say, what, what can I do? What, why is this not working? And of course the answer is go on a diet. All right, that's fine. I'll look at my nutrition and I, you know, first one to say I can make better food choices just like anybody else can, but other people aren't getting to be this size. And that's what's so frustrating in the, in the size difference between the upper body and the lower body. It's just, I always said it doesn't look right. Cause even as a little girl, I had bigger butt and hips. Mm -hmm. And my, I have one sister and she and my mother both were large breasted and had no butt and hips. And here I am, completely opposite of that. And I remember saying to my mom one time, who else in my, who, who, is there anybody else in the family who looks like me? You know, my adopted, what's going on? <laughs> and she said, no, your dad had three aunts that were very much the same as you are. And there we go. And I was like, I thought, okay, so there is some familial link here. I don't know what. And it's not just current day um, availability of food because we do see it in in grandmothers and aunts, right? And and you, if you look at some families' really old pictures, you see those legs, the stovepipe legs. So yeah, they had you know carbs at that time too. So it's not just our our the plethora of food we have now. It's it's that this is a bona fide disease. There are things that we can find out about in the tissue and we need collaboration between investigators of all types, basic scientists, uh, clinical researchers. We need to try medications. We need to look at the tissue. We need to find what's different about the gene expression in this tissue than in normal obesity or, or normal fat tissue. And I think those things are starting to happen, which is really great, but they need to happen on a, on a more widespread level and as women we need to speak up you know it, it this is affecting millions of women we need to continue to band together and it's starting now and it's it's like a revolution it's really exciting and i want my lipidema sisters that are stage one to never get to this point because at one point in my life i had lived in a stage one and i don't want that to happen and i'm gonna get choked up because i don't want that to happen to anybody else you know i stood there for years and watched this change and watch these things happen to my body knowing it wasn't right and nobody knew what to do and I didn't know what to do and if I had known then what I know now I can tell you I'd be tooting everybody's horn saying you need to talk to me now I need you to listen because this shouldn't happen to anybody.